in-class instruction two days a week instead of just one. With the one, with day one and day two schedules, this would give the opportunity to have full classes for each teacher at least once weekly. I am happy you choose to you choose the hybrid model to start. Student, teacher, and community safety are the priority. I work in healthcare. We have been making changes constantly. It's tough, but it can be done. Thank you again for your hard work and dedication. This comment is from Lisa Nunez of Berwick. Good evening. I have two children that go to MS 8060. One is in the sixth grade, the other is in the third grade. Their schedules conflict with one another when it comes to hybrid schooling. Has there been any thought about parents with multiple children in school in the school district? I understand that there can only be a certain amount of students in the building at a time. What about making sure that children with the same last name have the same schedules? That would make things easier for parents. Being a parent that works full time and having to wear a mask all day is not easy. It's hard to breathe and exhausting. Not to mention that other health risks it causes. Adults have difficulties wearing masks. I see adults trying to take their masks off or pulling on their masks. I cannot imagine being a child, especially one with special needs or sensory issues. With this all, all said, the school year needs to be one way or the other, full remote learning or full school days at school. Lindsay Saltierney of North Berwick, I apologize for that. First, let me take the opportunity to thank you for allowing the public to weigh in before voting on the proposed plan. There's no question that everyone has our children's best interests at heart. Undoubtedly, several plans have considered were considered and this plan was ultimately brought forth because the highly educated, experienced and devoted individuals who we entrust our children in da with daily believed it to be the best option to move forward safely. I support their plan and I support them. Please vote in favor of the proposed plan. Thank you. Megan Perrin of North Berwick. As a staff member and a parent who plans on returning to work and my child will be going back to school, how will staff members with children be expected on Wednesdays when our children leave early and we are expected to stay? Will childcare be offered to staff? Melissa Wentworth of North Berwick. I was wondering if any research had gone into what percentage of families will utilize the remote schooling options or even choose homeschooling. I feel like I'm hearing a lot of elementary school families saying they'll be opting to keep their kids home and lots of middle and high school families saying their child needs more in-person learning. I understand the issue is space for distancing, but if a certain percentage of families choose to stay home, will this then allow more families with needs to attend in person? A survey went out early this summer, but for myself, I know it was too difficult at the time to know for certain what option would be presented or what I would choose come fall. MS-80-35 has proposed a similar situation where 20% of their families are choosing to stay home, which allows for them to bring the other students back into the buildings while still following distancing regulations. Do we know the percentage of students would opt to stay home, thus allowing enough room for students of all grade levels that need in-person instruction. Regin Took of Lebanon. From talking with other parents, I'm hearing a willingness to send their elementary students in a max of two days and keep them home the other days, regardless of whether learning materials are provided. Sharon Lowry of North Berwick. With 9 through 12 only going in person one day a week. How will per pertinent things for the seniors be handled regarding college application, letters of recommendation, scholarships to apply for, and deadlines? Is there any scenario that would allow for seniors to attend a second day to work with guidance on these things? Or could they set up appointments to meet in person with the guidance for these things? Also, what about senior projects? Would this still be happening and will students have the guidance with that with this that they have had in the past? Heather Harris of Berwick. The plan presented to the board 
seems very contingent on hiring a large amount of individuals to meet staffing requirements. With so many schools in Southern Maine and New Hampshire also looking for increased staff, what cha changes could we expect if there is not enough new hires? Lisa Macy of Lebanon. First, thank you so much for all of your hard work. My comment is regarding the high schoolers only attending one day per week. One day a week, in my opinion, is not in that age group's best interest. I'd love to see an opportunity for them to attend both a day, a day one and a day two schedule for on campus. Thank you. John Dan of Lebanon. Wouldn't it make sense to crawl before we walk, taking baby steps before we jump back into a regular school year? Or was taking the spring off pointless? This could be detrimental not only to the staff, but to the students and their families. Dina Ryan of Berwick. Dear wonderful noble leaders, that's all it says. Um, Jeremy Caston of Berwick. Is there a possibility of outdoor education to prevent COVID, COVID spread? And then finally, Angelica DeButz made another comment and she said, I'm extremely concerned about mask requirement. Have you attempted speak, speaking speaking, teaching all day long in the heat with no AC. I can't wear one all day as an adult. That was the final comment. I just want to thank everybody for sending in their comments all week. Um, I think, I believe we've all read every single one of them and taking everything into consideration. So with that said, Audra, do you want to um, take it from here? I just had to unmute. Jen, thank you for reading the public input. I know it was quite a lot, but I appreciate it. I think before we start, I just want to recap the purpose of this evening. We have an agenda, which has gone out, but just to restate our purpose, the evening is going to be focused again on the plan itself. I will present um, what we presented the other night. However, I've added a few slides to address some of the questions that came out from Tuesday evening and even as early or as late as this morning. So we hope to be able to share some of that information. We also will talk about the um, student calendar and looking at that date. Again, we're not deciding at this point in time what we will be doing in September. The point of this meeting tonight is to look at the plan and make a motion on the plan and then look at the student calendar. Things will continue to change um, and we can talk about our a, a next meeting to talk about how we want to look at September. So I'm going to uh, put up the presentation now Just briefly, before I begin this piece, I just want to say that we had over 2,100 views of the board meeting of the board meeting that we held on Tuesday. Um, we shared this plan as part of that. We also had uh, sent out some parent um, an update with the plan presentation via messenger and then in that plan presentation there was a part that talked about if there were any comments or questions that parents could submit them to an email address that was community noble community yeah, community at ms 80 yeah, yeah. org. so we have also reviewed all of those um pieces of inf information so we feel like as Denise said, we've read and we have 
done our best to kind of go through everything and make all those considerations. So uh, I will talk again about this, this presentation. On July 17th, Governor Mills issued guidelines to school districts for reopening schools in the, in the fall. The guidelines are based on a three-tiered color-coded system to designate COVID-19 risk by county in the state of Maine. So red, a categorization of red, suggests that the county has a high risk of COVID-19 spread and that in-person instruction is not available. Yellow, a categorization of yellow, suggests that the county has an elevated risk of COVID-19 spread and that schools may consider a hybrid instructional model as a way to reduce the number of people in schools and classrooms at any one time. Green, a categorization as green suggests that the county has a relatively low risk of COVID-19 spread and that schools may consider in-person instruction as long as they are able to implement required health and safety measures. Schools in a green county may need to use a hybrid instruction model if there is insufficient capacity or other factors such as facilities, staffing, geography, transportation that may impact full impl implementation of the health and safety requirements. And here are the health and safety guidelines that we um, need to follow. Symptom screening at home, physical distancing, masks and face coverings required for adults and students, hand hygiene, personal protective equipment, and return to school after illness. Um, sick and sick staff members and students must use home isolation until they meet the criteria for returning to school. While we worked on the plan and we did give consideration to a multitude of plans, but prior to uh, the development of our plan, we did, we um, the task force and administrative team developed our guiding beliefs. So our guiding beliefs include put health and safety first, build and maintain positive relationships with all students considering social, emotional health, trauma and loss, provide safe face-to-face -face instruction as much as possible, provide up-to-date, effective and open communication, make decisions consistently, sustainably and equitably in the following areas, delivery of instruction, schedule, curriculum, continuum of services to meet the diverse needs of our community, analyze data to determine growth and loss to support academic progress. The MSAD 60 plan mirrors the, the state kind of regulations or guidelines for RED. So if we were RED, established as RED, that would be remote, that we would not have in-person learning and that all staff would be prepared to teach remotely. Our hybrid model is yellow, and I will be going through that shortly, but that combines in-person learning with remote learning and safe and healthy guide, safety and health guidelines must be followed. Green is in-person learning if all safety and health guidelines can be met, and I do stress all. MSAD 60 will, like, will likely be operating with the hybrid model for the start of the school year. Given the current safety and health guidelines, we cannot have every student in kindergarten through 12 on campus at the same time. And this is the hybrid framework. Elementary students, kindergarten through fifth grade. In person, 915 to 315, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 915 to 12 on Wednesdays. Lebanon Elementary and Hanson School would have kindergarten through fourth grade, North Berwick Elementary School would have kindergarten through third grade. Hussey School would have kindergarten through second grade. Knowlton School would have Berwick third and fourth grades. Noble Middle School would have North Berwick fourth grade in the district fifth. Noble Middle School and Noble High School students partially in person and partially remote. In person occurs at Noble High School seven o'clock to two o'clock. 6th and 7th grades in person on Monday and Tuesday, remote Wednesday through Friday. 8th grade in person Thursday and Friday, remote Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Ninth grade in person Thursday, remote Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. 10th grade in person Friday, remote Monday through Thursday. 
11th and 12th grades, in-person Wednesday, remote Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Sanford Regional Technical Center students will attend in-person learning specific days and times. More information will be forthcoming. One of the things that came up is that, that when we were reading through feedback, there wanted to be some more details about what the model of in the in-person and remote combination for the middle school and high school would look like. So this is a slide that shows um, a dra the draft schedule for the middle school. So as you can see, their in-person days are Monday and Tuesday, 7 to 2. So as you go down through that schedule, you see the arrival at 7 to 7.30, and then period 1, 2, and 3, and it lists out the lunch, the lunch schedule, and then period 5, and then dismissal at 2. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday would be their remote times. So um, what's listed out here is period 1, period 2, um, and then the rest of the day, if you look through that. Um, and that follows the same pattern Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I'll give you a moment to look at that because this is a new slide. So, Audra, I just have a question. So this is um, middle school, so 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, or 6th and 7th? 6th and 7th. 6th and 7th. And so they do all five days of the week, they have some structured class time that they need to attend. Is that correct? So like, for example, Friday, they've got eight to 9.15, that's an actual class time, team time, and then the, it looks like in the afternoon, they have some independent work time. But correct. all the days, they'll have to basically check in and go to school in some form. Correct. Okay. This slide, is the high school version for the hybrid and this is a little uh, set up a little differently than the middle school so i'm going to give you a grade level and uh it's it's a similar structure per grade levels but i'm just going to pick a junior so if you have a student who is a junior they're mostly remote um well monday and tuesday they have their remote day so as you look at the, the left hand side from eight to nine they have a their class, their block one class, and that will be direct instruction with the teacher and with their classmates. And so there will be direct instruction and then after that direct instruction, there'll be time to work in groups or independently with the, with the teacher still there. So that um, is similar at the nine to 10 o'clock time as well. And then the 10 to 11, I, I need my glasses, but from 10 to 11, it has, um, there are other selections here. If there's an AP course, if there, if there's an AP course, they'll have two blocks of that. It's also student work time um, to continue what they were doing. Uh, then Wednesday would be that, that junior's uh, in-person learning day. So they would be in from seven to two o'clock. And during that time, those, uh, their classes and their teachers would give them some work that they would need to also continue on Thursday and Friday. So on Thursday and Friday, they would be doing some asynchronous work, meaning that it's not as structured as Monday and Tuesday as far as being in the classroom with their students, with their peers, uh, but they would be able to still have contact with a teacher um, it may not be exa exactly at 8 o'clock like it would have been on their Monday, but they would still be able to have contact with their teachers, and they would continue the work that was assigned or that they were working on through longer projects or activities. So that would be Thursday and Friday. I have another question. Sure. Um, during the days, I guess the Thursday and Friday that they are doing the asynchronous work. Um, previously, when they could, when the teachers had sort of office hours, it was by email only. Is that um, still the plan, or is there a way to connect one on one with teachers? Mr. Finley, would you be able to address that question? Sure. Um, we will be able to contact their teachers. Um, 
They can do it probably um, the way we're communicating right now or by email. But it depends on what that teacher is teaching that day because they'll be teaching other students possibly on that day. So it'll be tough to know when they're available unless they have a teacher schedule. Right, but, right, we will like to know more about the specific availability of each teacher. I mean, we've got about 90 of them. Um, once they know the exact and precise composition of their classes, um, as well as their, you know, we know their own availability. So one of the expectations at least on those, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday days, would be that when that information is solidified, that teachers communicate that in their, their course syllabus or on their Google classrooms, the kids know exactly where and when they'll be available. Um, if Joe's right, you know, if I'm, most of our teachers are teach more than one grade level. So um, where a junior might be at home on Thursday and Friday, the majority of their teachers might actually be on site um, working with the other grade levels. Um, but they would have some form of time where they could check in and work with those students for tutoring or one-on-one -on -one support, motivational, academic, anything like that, which is hard to articulate in that diagram like this because it's so teacher dependent. Thank you. So the next slide is teaching and learning. This is, uh, these are our priorities for remote and hybrid instructional models. High quality instruction focused on the main learning standards, clear and reasonable expectations for students, timely and meaningful feedback, on student work in progress. We will focus on high impact instructional strategies, high impact tasks, the purpose of student work is clearly articulated and meaningful, a focus on connectedness and community building. And these are just some of the considerations and challenges that we've talked about before, but we have, um, due to the transportation with the social distancing, we can put um, have 26 students on the bus at one time, which is significantly lower number than what we typically do. Uh, school nutrition, students are required to adhere to six feet distancing while eating lunch, which will cause us to potentially use other spaces in addition to the cafeterias throughout the building during the lunch blocks. And then we do have to have some an increased support with cafeteria monitors, custodians, substitutes, and bus monitors. Uh, and then we do have some, some supervision and administrative shifts based on some of the grade level shifts. So I want to also try to answer a few of those questions that came in at public input. And we do have a remote option that we will talk a little bit about. So our remote option at the lower level, K to 5, really does focus around eight, probably 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And we will talk a little bit about that in the student registration that will go home. But that is if you are concerned about health and safety uh, for your child or your family. And we, if you opt in that way, you don't need to stay that way for a year, you know, however long. If you decide um, that you feel like your child is ready or you're ready to have your child come into school, um, we will certainly work with that and the other way around as well. If you start an, in, in the school setting in person at that level, you and if you decide for safety and health of your family or your child that you need to change that, that's something that we can accommodate as well. The remote, 100% remote, uh, for the high school might look a little different than that at the elementary level because we already have some remote work going on. But if it was 100% remote for a high schooler or a middle schooler, we would really need to look at the main learning um, standards and the graduation standards to really work individually with that child to make sure that he or she is getting what they need uh, at that time and at that grade level. So I hope that answered the question about is there flexibility going between a remote and a in-person hybrid blend. Um, I think that was a big question that came up. Andrea, I have a question about the younger ones. If people are sort of coming and going, um, I know you guys have put a lot of work into planning how many kids are in a classroom. So how, how do you accommodate for those sort of the coming and going without being able to plan for it or, right. the, or like the coming, I guess. Sure. The ones that choose to, you know, come 
that maybe start remote and then come in person? Right. I think that's a great question. And we've given that some consideration um, as far as, you know, we don't see a, like a, a mass enrollment, um, in a, more of a gradual kind of let's see how things are going type of thing. So uh, the way we're going to be splitting classes is that we can, you know, likely be able to, de you know, and this is all dependent on we don't know, we don't know the numbers yet of who who's going to commit to coming back right away or who's going to um, opt to do some more, some remote work right away. But the hope would be that we had some flexibility within some of those classes to be able to accommodate one or two um, if they were to change their minds based on, on different factors. All right. So that, um, yes, go ahead. Sorry, Nancy. Okay. Um, so, did you guys give any consideration to the Wednesday being remote learning for everybody? Sure. It was talked about quite a bit. Yes, it was, it was brought up a, a little, uh, quite a bit as far as the questions that came in on Tuesday evening. We did not see a lot of questions regarding that on the email address, but there has, I believe, been some out in social media. We, we had a task force meeting again on Wednesday morning when we discussed this. And the team did feel that at this point in time, they would like to keep that in as a half day to continue with the consistency for students. We also, looked, we also addressed that question that came up about, is there a way or could we focus on trying to get a grade level or a population back in? And we certainly talked about that. And what we're going to do is set some criteria and collect data around that criteria and then work uh, as according to what's happening with safety um, to try to get in that population or that grade. That may not happen right away. We have to collect data. We have to be very careful with how we do it, um, but that is a goal that we have. And, and a lot of these questions, I mean, we don't know what the enrollment's gonna be in school and out of school, and we can't answer an awful lot of the parent questions until we know that. Exactly. And so hopefully yeah. the parents can be a little bit patient and wait for the survey to come out, and then we can give some more hard facts to them. Exactly, and I, I, that brings up a good point, Nancy, that if we have 20% of our parents who say that they're starting remotely, that might, you know, make us change a little bit about where we have space and what we have, but we really don't have that number yet. So that's why tonight is very important that the board is able to um, make a motion and, and we would like to see this plan accepted so we can move ahead with uh, several things that we need to do. Audra, can you, um, I do think that knowing for the younger kids, knowing that they have the option of remote versus in school will, I'm guessing, help a lot of parents make their decision or at least get closer. But um, one of the other things that we saw a lot of questions, oops, um, that we saw a lot of questions on was transportation. And I know that in the meeting on Tuesday, you did talk about like, you know, the fact that you're looking at different dismissal apps and maybe extending the time. Can you just talk a little bit about that so that parents that are listening can hear because I know that there was some concern about how to get different kids to different schools, but it sounds like you guys are really taking all of that into account. Yes, we are. We're working really hard at that. So I believe that the elementary with uh, Chris Russo today or yesterday had um, a few different presentations on different apps for dismissal, but I'm going to jump to the bus right now. So in the we're calling it, we, we had called it a parent survey, but we think it's, a, we think of it more as a parent registration. So that will be going out. And when it goes out, there is a part about transportation. Does your child need transportation if, if you come in person? And if we're asking parents to fill out the registration form for each child, um, not just their household so that we can really plan accordingly for the different grade level bands and um, what days for that. So that will be really important. And our transportation needs a good two to three weeks to get the schedule developed. 
And um, as I said, it's we're looking at about 26 students per buses, but our transportation is very creative and we'll be able to hopefully offer some things that we've, like what we've done in Berwick in the past when we've had kind of shuttle runs, picking up some of those um, students closer to uh, schools per se. Um, so we do have that registration in for our students and families, but we are also at that point going to see how many parents or families will be able to drop their students off. Um, we've had experience between Hussey and Knowlton School with dismissal time because we always had the same dismissal time. And there was some, sometimes parents had a, like a first grader at Hussey and a fourth grader at Knowlton and how do we do it? And we just worked around that. Like we would hold the Hussey student until the parent picked up at Knowlton and came over to Hussey School. So we had that option to have that flexibility for that parent or that family. And so that would definitely be something that we would be looking at as well. Does that address the transportation question, Denise? Yeah, I think just letting parents know that we are fully aware uh, that there are going to be drop-offs at multiple schools and that we're working on it. <laughs> yes. yes. Don't know the answers yet, but working on it. Does anybody else on the board have questions at this point? Yeah, I have a few. Um, the first one, and I might have missed this because I just got, got on here a little bit ago, but just to clarify for the the high school and middle school, we indicated the start time was 7 o'clock, but that's actually when they can start dropping kids off at school. School doesn't actually start until 7.30 thereabouts, correct? Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and can you, I don't know what you shared earlier, but in one of the things that we got earlier, we said something about a uh, mask break. Can you explain that, what that entails? Every classroom will need to have mask breaks, several of them throughout the day, especially at the elementary level, not just with eating food, but um, during recess time or exercise or just going out having stretch breaks. So those will be built in throughout the day. I know um, schools are working on you know, thinking about signups for that time so that there's not a lot of classes outside at the same time. Um, the high school has a good chunk of time in their schedule built in for a mask or a face covering break. Um, so those are definitely front and center for us. So those breaks are being taken outside in the fresh air, hopefully. Yes, yes. Um, of course, when we're having a like a nor'easter, I'm not quite sure about that, but you know, we're we're working on that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, Audra, maybe you just said this, but do the teachers get that as well at that time or at a yeah. different time? Yes, and and part of why we are looking to increase some support for cafeteria monitors is so that we do have a little flexibility in the in the usually our staff run the the recess and lunch coverage. To, um, teachers and educational technicians and our hope with adding some increased support as far as classroom or cafeteria monitors is to allow some flexibility so maybe a teacher can have a little bit of a break you know like a five minute ten minute you know face mask break um, during a big chunk of time when they're you know when they might be teaching just to kind of give them a little space to, to take a moment so it's a double purpose uh, can you also, and this might be for either Joe or Allison, but can you also explain the senior sessions that was uh, shown earlier? Yeah, sure. I'll explain that, Joe, if that's okay. Um, so basically, we, we understand that you know last year's seniors, this is this whole experience is really tough. I think for this year's seniors, it's tougher um, starting the school year this way. And then you know, pertaining to the question, I think that one of the community members asked around. Um, support for post-secondary planning and senior projects and we recognize that we would like to have some special space in our schedule for seniors to get those things addressed. So we are proposing um, an after-school module that will happen at least two days a week. We preliminarily drafted it on Tuesday and Thursday knowing that kids might opt out of the afternoon Friday um, and then not on their Wednesday day to really give them the feel that they had really three 
potential touch points with the school um, in person. And so what we're looking at is two concurrent afternoon sections, um, probably from three to four, and then four to five on a rotating basis with staff members across the two days um, where they will focus on general academic support, senior project support, and post-secondary planning. And for the post-secondary planning elements, we would be rotating in school counselors and help them. Um, help kids with those things. And that would be in addition to any other structured in-time support on the remote days or in-person days that would, would be offered and available to those kids. So that's our preliminary plans uh, for that right now. Um, can I sort of uh, just, I think it goes in that, I think I saw it on the same schedule. There, It looked like there were separate blocks for AP support. Does that mean that like if, if a student is taking AP physics, are they in a regular physics class and then get additional AP support or are they in an AP physics class that just happens to be scheduled at that time? Right, so those would be for students enrolled in the AP physics course. So they might have an empty block earlier in the day and that would actually be their, their learning block. Um, it's possible. So the way that the schedule works because of our attempt to cohort and minimize transitions for kids out of safety and running that semester based um, four block schedule. So the day one semester one, day two semester two piece, we intentionally front load those semester two or day two APs into the schedule this way um, because we would want, not want them to have a delay in starting those courses. So. We also chunked it out so that for a student who's taking three AP courses, for example, could be sure to touch base um, with all three of those teachers without those being in conflict with one another. Um, and then the reciprocal would run for the second semester. Um, so basically, it allowed us to make sure that AP courses run all year long despite the semester um, day one, day two method. One, one other question and then a, then a hard one for you all. But first one is, um, what about what are we going to do with the middle school SRO? Is he going to stay there with the fourth and fifth graders or is he, what's our plan with the SRO at the middle school? Uh, right now it's to stay with the fourth and fifth grade. Okay. Um, and then I, I just wanted to add that. Yeah. To the public, I really appreciate all the responses that we received. I had tons of emails come in in the last three days, and I've read every single one of them. I haven't replied to any of them because, well, there's just too many of them to reply to. But uh, the input that I received was was great, and it was for you know both sides. I had pros and cons on both sides. Um, what I think I just heard you say about this plan is that we're going to keep the Wednesdays. Can you, right now, I'm leaning on getting rid of the Wednesday half days. Can you sell to me and explain to me why we need to keep that half day Wednesday? Well, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> uh, so we have re when we were really looking at developing our model, we focused, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking about each and every grade level. And at the elementary level, we talked a lot about how much consistency needs to occur every single day, every single week for the students so that they can, at the very lowest of levels, learn the routines to be able to follow the routines and at that upper three, four, five level, just keeping the momentum going for their time. So part of it is that, not part of it, but a large part of that is the consistency for them, but also looking at that and trying to build in different kinds of things for them like do we focus on you know more specifically on social emotional learning do we make it a science content day do we because we're really focusing long and hard on math and literacy do we take that time to offer some other opportunities for our students so that we're reinforcing the con consistency of the schedule and the continuity but that we're expanding what we're doing with them as well Okay, thank you. Sure. I have a question. Um, if I believe um, the current plan is that if somebody shows symptoms, 
they are they are sent home and it's a 10 day out of school I, I believe something like that if that student gets tested and tests negative can they come back sooner than that or teacher staff member anybody amy do you want to jump in hi can everybody hear me yeah okay so part of um as a school nurse we obviously aren't going to be able to determine if it is covid or if it's a cold and a sneeze um, in the school. So the only way we'll know if the student went home and the parent determined to bring them to the doctor and it was a positive test for them to give us a call back. And then at that point with the positive test, that's when the 10 day thing would begin. Say we send a student home with a headache and after a couple of days, they're feeling much better and they, the doctor doesn't think, they doesn't even test them, doesn't think it was worthy of a COVID test. Then they may return as usual um, if they're symptom free for 24 hours without the aid of medication. So but, they're only out if they test positive. Yes, or if they're living, say one of their parents are positive, they would need to stay home. Um, if the suspicion is high enough that it's a positive case, um, then they probably should stay home for the 10 days to make sure it, it resolves itself. Yeah, I was wondering more. So it sounds like that the, if the symptoms go away or they test negative, then they can come back. So if they have a negative test, they can, they don't, they can come back whenever they get that test. Yeah, if they get home, if they get okay. to the doctor and then a couple of days later the test result came back negative, then yes, that would be fine. Okay. Are we going to be able to codify this more firmly? That feels like it's very loose. And I realize that it might have to remain very loose, but I think for both families and staff, having a very clear decision tree to follow, which is tied into am I going to school today um, would be helpful because right now I can't imagine as a parent how I would make that decision. Right. So our plan is to, that's going to be part of the self screening and being done at home for both students and staff. Um, it's sort of a checklist and that is developed by the state. Um, if your child has one of these symptoms, one of the major symptoms, then they should stay home. If they've got two of these minor symptoms, then they should stay at home. Um, so there are going to be guidelines given to parents to look at and refer to each morning. What about asymptomatic cases, though? That's, we, we don't know what we don't know. And we can't see what we can't see, unfortunately, with this situation. Okay, thank you. I have a question um, and, and somebody actually did ask me this this set of guidelines from the state are they truly just guidelines or are they mandates and if they're just guidelines do we have to follow all of them well I I feel like um, like one of, for instance, the state had come up with the three to six foot guideline. We are going to adhere to the six foot guideline. That's our choice. Um, other things like the mask wearing, you have to wear one to get into a store. You have to wear one to get into a restaurant. Those are mandates. Those things, there's no negotiation on that. Okay. Do we have a, um are you looking at this as I know we, I know the plan is for the school year, but is there a task force or something that we're looking at, say by Christmas to, um, you know, ideally consider, I mean, I, you know, I, I, maybe I'm an optimist, but if things are improving, um, are we going to be able to adjust the plan accordingly. And one of my biggest sort of concerns slash priorities is to get especially the sixth and seventh graders at least in a little bit more um, and then kind of go up from I'd like to have everybody in there a little bit more if it's safe. But I I I feel like that's a population that 
needs more than what we are offering right now. And um, I'd love to know that, you know, that maybe by the end of the first semester, we're willing to reconsider if things are going in the right direction. We will continuously evaluate how things are going. And we, again, will have some criteria and collect data on all of that to work through it. I don't see the task force dissolving just because school begins. I think that this is a very long process that we're in and uh, we're in it for the long haul. So we just, that we need to keep, our, keep everything going so that we can continually to review everything. Can we have a regular agenda item on board meetings to get updates from the task force? That's a great idea. And I like data, so. Okay, all right, good. Give us data, we can't argue over that. Yeah. <laughs> we can do that. Um, with the new, or with the governor coming out and extending the civil emergency till I think it was September 3rd, how does that affect us now, if she would say she were to extend it again till October 3rd, would, does this civil emergency mean that we can't go to school? Well, that's a good question, Travis. We, um, we're looking right into that. <laughs> that's my best answer right now. Um, she still has us designated as green. And the next designation is coming out on the 14th of August. So it's going to be very curious to see how we stay the same or change uh, in, the, in a week from now. So I think that that also comes into play, even with the civil emergency that is uh, down. But we will get right back to you on that. Okay. When, and the one other thing, when we send out this survey uh, to find out whether they want to do remote or in person, can we add something in there about the whole Wednesday thing to see what the general consensus is? Because I've seen both. I've seen people, uh, actually, I think I've seen more majority say get rid of the Wednesday as it'd be more of a hassle. But I, I have seen both that say keep Wednesday and get rid of the Wednesday. And I'd be curious to see what the general population is that would uh, have for a percentage of that answer. Sure. We can do that or it's in your purview right now to, if you want to take that out because of the feedback you have or, or your decision, that's certainly, we're, we're presenting to you what we feel is educationally sound and best and safe, but you certainly can take that out of the plan based on the feedback that you've received or how you feel. But we can also add that as a, a comment or a question for the elementary Peace. My, I heard a lot of the same feedback that, that Travis did. Um, I think that it was often in the form of a sort of last thought, which and and often phrased as it seems, you know, uh, like a hassle or something like that. Whereas it wasn't really a health concern, or it was. You know, there was definitely some transportation challenges in the pickup for some, but um, I, I, my thought is if you guys like, you know, took it back and discussed it all again and decided that that was what was best for the education of the kids, um, I, personally, I'm inclined to support it. Um, you know, I could I could go either way, but I didn't. The arguments that I heard against it weren't from health and safety standpoint. It was more just that it people didn't fully understand sort of what it, how it was going to be used. I'd like to also add that some of the comments I heard were, was that parents kind of need to be able to have that day when their child is at work. They would like to see them to go to school the full day and maybe have um, the uh, professional development for an hour before school each day for the teachers. But the parents, the few parents that um, responded to me, um, they, they felt that if the child could be there all day, it would help them greatly in order to try to get uh, their lives back in order with work and everything. So I think we have to also, we have to think of the socioeconomic um, impact it's having on families 
and daycares. I don't know what daycares are open and, you know, I don't want to create another hardship for parents if they don't have proper um, care for their children. So that, that would be the one comment I'd have on the a half day. Uh, Audrey, I have a question to you. I had a couple of people reach out about the bus schedule in the sense that um, with the survey that you're sending out with that half day, um, is there going to be a place in that survey where they can say, yes, I can drop my kids off Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, but no, I can't. I'm going to need bus transportation on Wednesday because that half day is creating that flux for exactly work schedules. So they may have to use the bus on some days, but not on other days. So I just want to clarify, is that in the survey? Brenda, could you clarify that? Yes. Um, unfortunately, with given the restrictions and the numbers of seats that we're able to use in the bus, um, students that are going to be riding the bus will have a seat assigned for the morning and the afternoon. Um, and I can't put more students on a bus in the afternoon on a particular day. However, we are doing some shuttle runs to the bigger daycare centers in Berwick, North Berwick and Lebanon. Okay, so will, will a student be able to take to sign up to take the bus just on one day? Not at this time because we have 26 seats that we have to um, assign and I can't put 28 in the afternoon or 28 on a certain day, but uh, I don't know if I'm explaining it well, but it, it's so it was number of seats. Would they sign up for all five days and then just not show up for some of them? Is that what their option is? I think so. I mean, at this point, we have to assign those buses, those seats to a morning and afternoon um, okay. child and they have to be it has to be the same child in the morning and the afternoon okay so we uh, is that clear in the survey because I did have a couple of parents say I can drop my kid off because I, I can either go in go into work a little bit later or get out a little bit I can't do a middle of the day so I either need transportation the whole week which I really don't or I need transportation on Wednesday only. So I just want to make sure it's going to be clear in the paperwork. Yes, I, I believe we tried to make it as clear as possible in our portion of, um, of the questionnaire about transportation. Brenda, in your experience, how, like, at a, back in the good old days, um, what, like, what percentage of people I don't even know if that's something that you track, but um, I I think this will be interesting. I'm, I don't know how this will work for people. I think it'll. I think you'll end up with a uh, a lot of empty seats because people will have to sign up for the whole thing. But uh, right. I, well, it, we did track um, on a typical year. Last year, we transported 72 percent of our student body. And the way our plan is at this time, we can transport 53% of our student body. Okay. All right, so the best case scenario is that you have empty seats. I, I think I think so. I, I mean, I think we can always try to do the best we can. And if there's any way that we can add students in, uh, once we see what it looks like, I think we'll do the best we can to get as many students as possible on a bus if they need it. Right, and we are not calling it a survey per se, it's a registration just so that we have more of a commitment for families when they sign in for um, transportation or food service or uh, you opting for a hybrid versus fully remote. What options will parents have to change that down the road, both transportation. I know you talked, you said you talked about remote, but if their transportation needs change, how does that work? Um, I, I think we are going to be reevaluating. As Audra said, I think we have to. It's it seems to be a living, moving, <laughs> growing, and changing thing, and I think we have to just try to 
get as many as we can that need it. Um, you know, we, we may see that things change with the distancing uh, on the bus going down the road, and then we could add two to a seat. We also have the option of students in the same, who live in the same household can sit together. So um, we say that 27 per bus, but if we have children in the same family, that gives us a couple of more seats. Um, I wondered about adding something else to the survey too. Um, a street is email with the little bullet points and everything about possibly starting with two weeks worth of remote before we get going into school. I didn't know how the people felt about that, but I know that I actually had the thought cross myself. I'm like, I wonder how things are going to work around us. And I'd feel better knowing that things were going well around us uh, to be able to say, hey, we're good to go. Let's try the plan. And everything's really had time to get put into place. I didn't know if anybody else felt the same way as that other than, you know, Estrita and myself. But I, I would, if you guys felt that way too, I, I wondered if we should include that on the survey to see it might help parents in the high school level feel better about the, the remote study in general. But then, you know, like I said, getting the bugs worked out and everything like that. And um, just making sure that we're not part of the first spike in case there's going to be one. I see that more as a question that we have in a follow-up meeting because tonight okay. we're just looking at adopting the plan and okay. then looking at the student calendar. We, we will need another meeting to discuss how you would like us to move ahead with the fall. And that certainly is a discussion point. Do we, you know, have some version of remote to start? Do we start gradually? Um, all that is a discussion for a later time. This is just to talk about the plan itself and adoption of that plan. Gotcha. Sorry, it's the new oh, me. No. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay. So I really think this Wednesday thing is causing more of a headache then it is a good and I'm really leaning towards we should just just drop the whole Wednesday thing in general because uh, you know I'm hearing it's I know it's going to be a hassle for the parents for those three hours it's so they're just going to end up having to take the whole day off anyways to be able to send their kid to and from it's going to cause a nightmare with the transportation because you're going to have kids sign up for the whole week if that's if they need it for one day and now we're adding we're adding more levels to our transportation issue by having people sign up on when they don't need to really sign up on a day-to-day -day basis. So I, I really think that we should just eliminate the whole Wednesday thing uh, and do a remote learning day, a reset, a break day, uh, and go from there. But I'm just one person on the board. So the rest of you guys, can we can all discuss it or we can move forward. I'm, I'm good with getting rid of it, too. I, I kind of was leaning that way the other day. And the only other thought I had is, and I don't want to uh, reform all the work that's been done, but it just popped in of, you know, maybe sending the younger kids Monday through Thursday. And people were asking about grade five not being so far away uh, for the Lebanon kids and then wondering if we open Friday up uh, as the day that the fifth graders could be at the school. And maybe that's putting way too many things in play, but throwing out that I'm in support of getting ready, rid of Wednesday as well. Uh, we do need the break, and the, the the good time to have the break would be the Wednesday for the skills practice, the half day remote, because that would offer us an opportunity to do to do some really deep cleaning, which we were going to do in the afternoon. But Wednesday makes uh, a good sense because we've got Monday, Tuesday, do that real heavy duty cleaning again on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then you've got that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that follows a good flow. Audra, is there any way that we could vote to adopt a plan tonight that does not include making a decision on that about that Wednesday and include that? I know it's a registration, but um, somehow put that out there. Is that an option without without jeopardizing making a decision on the rest of it? This is Stu. Hello, <laughs> I'm working through. <laughs> My only concern with it, Denise, is that at some level, that Wednesday will impact um, the choices that parents make regarding transportation. I think Travis is correct in that. And I'm not sure how to do the registration 
with two oh. options without we're to be perfectly frank we are up against it and we need to get moving forward in terms of what we're going to do <laughs> and 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 like be able to to get a solid um number of families that are thinking about what they're doing remotely all that kind of stuff i'm just worried about extending the confusion a little bit longer if that makes sense yeah so my my vote would actually be to keep it and um but to be watching it and as with other things um I'm, i really am hoping that as a district we're going to be able to be flexible and have some goals for down the road whether it's getting the older kids in the buildings more or um so if we you know if we are watching it and have the ability to make an adjustment down the road if we need to, um, but that would be, I would be in favor of keeping it, mostly just because I feel like you guys have given it a lot of thought from an educational standpoint. Totally appreciate that. And um, I will tell you that the, the, the administrators from the elementary crew have been kind of keeping us updated, that they are, um, they're flexible with that decision as well. They're, they're willing, they're willing to, uh, I don't want to say bow because that's not what it is, but they're, they're willing to give up that Wednesday timeframe and um, utilize it for you know, skills and, and, and skill building remotely if that's what the board would like us to do. Um, they had a plan, but, you know, we're, we're in the middle of, uh, this is all about uh, learning how to be flexible. So we will, we will work with whatever um, the board decides. Do we need to do like a straw poll on the Wednesday thing? What's the best way to? I think that's the best way to move forward. Is to just do what everybody wants. Okay, so I don't want to do an official roll call, but um, I can't see everyone. So um, I guess we'll just go through. Nancy, what's your thought? Two thumbs up, thumbs down. I can say it out loud. <laughs> Oh, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, Nancy. Nancy, unmute yourself. I did. There we go. Okay. So, how are we saying yes, we want to keep it, or no, we want to get rid of the Wednesdays? Right. I think we're just doing a straw poll right now. Yeah. I would be okay with get, getting rid of it. Okay. And Travis, you want to get rid of it, and Stephanie. You want to get rid of it, Joanne? I, I would prefer to keep it if we could because I know the kids lost a lot last year, and you know the more um, instruction that they can have in the classroom, I think the better it would be for them. Um, so I would prefer if we kept the Wednesday. Okay, um, Linda. <laughs> uh, I I can tell you that the last 48 hours I'm kind of leaning in a different direction. Uh, in the beginning, I was I was thinking of seeing the value of it, but the more and more input we get, and the more I really give it some thought about um, trying to balance not only ed the educational needs but the parents' needs, the bus needs, and everything else. Um, I think we need to be flexible. It could also be used down the road if we're being flexible for a day to bring those sixth graders in that you talked about. So right now, in this moment, I'm going to say I'm going to lean towards eliminating Wednesday. Okay. Estrita? I think Linda just pretty much nailed it for me. Um, academically, I see its value, but I agree that we're in an economic time where the parents are stressed and it could be difficult for them to get that work arranged so they can get the kids home. And I think, I, yeah, I, I would lean toward getting, getting rid of it as well. So let's remember now. that anybody that we think that is going to struggle to get the kids home is now going to have a kid home the mm -hmm. whole day. So, yes, uh -huh. but that's a different kind of planning than having to come up with something midday. Right. I agree. And that, that was what I heard from most people is that the half a day is more of a pain in the butt than just being able to take the whole day. 
and adjust for the whole day. It makes life a lot easier. Right. Okay. Um, Lynn? I think I agree that we should probably get rid of it for now, but keep it in mind to put it back if we need it at some future point. And Rebecca? Is Rebecca on? I actually don't know if, if we ever... Rebecca, are you on the call? Yes, I'm, I'm on. Um... While she's thinking, can I just ask a clarifying question? If we're talking about getting rid of this, are they, is it now a half remote day? So they are doing at home. What are they doing instead of being in the classroom? Right, it's a, it's a half high, it's a half day remote. So it would be skills and practice. Okay, so the parents are now going, like just so that we all realize that the parents are gonna have to be doing that half day um, remote teaching. So it's not like a daycare situation. <clears throat> There's gonna have to be a parent, they're gonna have to be at home with a parent, not in a daycare, right? Well, they're not necessarily, but they have to have, they're gonna have to have somebody assist them with the remote learning that day is what I'm getting out of it, whether it's a, a family member or a, or a daycare provider that's able to assist. Yes, the, if we went to that Wednesday remote, it would have to be, they would have to have somebody assist them with the remote learning on that day. And, and again, that day would be for more skills-based things, so it's not introducing new material. It would be using something that they learned in class and some technology, like like um, some of the platforms that we're using, like Zern. So it would be those types of things for school reinforcement. Rebecca, any thoughts? Rebecca? I think we lost her. Okay. Um, my, my thought is, I mean, I get it. I get both sides. Um, I, I feel like switching the plan because it's a hassle for some people is not, that's, I mean, honestly, this is the whole thing that everything's a hassle right now. Everything is a hassle. It's a hassle having older kids home. It's a half, ha all of it is, it's a hassle wearing masks. So I feel like, I don't feel like that is the right reason to make the call um, to get rid of that day. You know, we had half days before and when we introduced it, it was a hassle and you know, late starts, all sorts of things that, you know, we've, we figured it out. And the, I mean, we, the parents figured it out and sometimes it, it remains a hassle. I just, in my opinion, that is, that's, that's not the criteria that I want to be using to make the decisions for this plan. So, um, I, I would vote to keep it in, but I also fully understand that that, um, you know, I, I understand the reasoning for wanting to get rid of it. I just, for me, that's not the criteria that I want to use to vote for or against something. And Rebecca, any chance we got you back? No. Well, it's six to two, so I guess we're going to move forward without that um or change that to a remote day 
it would be half remote. Half remote. Yes. Yeah. We'll note that in the minutes. So now do we need to motion to approve the plan as just amended to move right. forward or do we yeah. have more discussion that needs to be had? I feel like my questions have been answered. Um, you know, my only remaining thing, which I keep saying is just to know that we're going to reevaluate as we go along and um, I'd like to be able to, I'd like to know that we're doing that in a transparent way um, so that we can continue to make the right decisions or the best decisions we can. I agree. Mm -hmm. At this moment in time, it's always at this moment in time. Um, is there any other discussion or questions or are we ready? to vote. I would like to have Rebecca back. Um, does anybody, Sue, do you have her number to maybe text her? Yeah, now? let me give her, if I, I, I think I do, let's have a look. It looks like she's on the phone calling in, so I don't know if that's gonna work, but. I know. All right, it's gonna take me a second to find her, cause. Is she the number that ends with one three? Yeah, I think so. I think her screen is locked, so she might be having uh, internet problems. Yeah. Um, can you, can you talk amongst yourself. Give me a minute, and I'll uh, see if I can find her. Okay. <laughs> so I think I think it's important for the public to realize that even if this plan's approved right now, it doesn't mean that it's not going to change in two weeks or a week because this thing is right. evolving every single minute like i'm getting non-stop emails from my side of the career of things that change all the time and and i know that the school is just getting as many as i am and so we need to all realize that this is our plan that we want to try and follow if we approve it here shortly but things might still change before school starts and they they need to be flexible with us and understand that we are as you heard tonight during that short straws poll the size that we're being weighed every single time the question was asked was we're not taking this lightly. We're trying to figure this out. And it has been a royal pain in the butt, just not just for the board members, but also for the admin. I mean, the admin has really done a majority of this work to try and put this stuff together. And it's it's huge and it's a crazy undertaking, but we're not going to make everybody happy. We just need to try and make as many people as we possibly can happy and offer the options that we have in the best interest of our kids. So. Well said. I do feel like the plan for the K through five gives parents um, some good options to do what they are comfortable doing. Um, and that's, I think that's why I'd like to see the, the middle school mostly plan sort of evolve, hopefully as as things, well, well, I'm not gonna say get better. I'd like to see them get better. <laughs> um, do we do we want to just go ahead and take a vote? I mean, we have enough. Is there anybody object to that? Why don't we do it? Okay. Um, so, can I get a motion to? Accept the plan as amended. I'll make a motion to accept the plan as amended with the Wednesday as remote for K through five. Or half remote. Half remote for K through five. Um, any other discussion? All right. Um Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Stephanie Hagenbill. Yes. We don't have Rebecca. Um, Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. Estrada Schaefer. Yes. Um, Denise Milet. Yes. Um, and so that's eight, and I guess an abstention, or I'm not sure yeah. what 
Miss Ado. I tried to remember, but I wasn't able. It, she didn't pick up when I called, probably because she's trying very hard to listen. Okay. Um, um, I I just want to echo what Travis just said, and I know that this this has not been easy for anybody, for parents, for admin, mm -hmm. for teachers, um, for the board. So I think everybody is doing a tremendous amount of work and thinking and planning and. Um, I think this is a sound plan, and if we can now um, focus on communicating it well to families, I think we'll be able to move forward. Agreed. Are all of the uh, sample screens available publicly now at this point of the schedules and so on? I think they, they make a good um, uh, illustration of what how the plan would look. Yes, we're in the process of, of getting that out, depending on how this went this evening. Okay. Um, yes. Andre, what's your timing on sending out the registration and when do you, are you giving um, parents a deadline to get it back? We are going to get the registration out tomorrow <laughs> and we let it, let it back yesterday. Uh, right. Monday night. Okay. Yes. And this registration is for transportation and in school or remote? In, in public service. And food service. Are they signing up to say I'm going to need uh, like lunch on such and such a day or it's just more, yes, no? Sure, it's more for the remote time if they are going to want some some um, lunch and breakfast during the remote part of their schedules. Whoa, how are you going to do yeah. that? Oh, we have a plan. <laughs> we do. So, <laughs> yes, so this increases. So the Wednesday now our elementary kiddos will have the opportunity to have the remote food as well. And then for all of our sixth through twelfth grade, we have a whole schedule for that as well. So oh my wow. Yeah, no, it's it's uh this is we could run a city right now. We're doing a good job. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um and before we move on to the next piece, I would just like to to make another shout out to the task force and the administrative team because it has just been unrelentless work and just Everybody had very positive intentions all the way through and just a lot of cooperation and problem solving. It's just been amazing. And you as well. I know this this has not been easy at all. This is very heavy, heavy kind of work. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I agree. Um, Definitely so a big thank you to all the admin for putting this whole plan together because it was a lot of work that went into it. So we greatly appreciate it. Um, so do we need to talk about the school calendar? We do. We okay. do. So our, we are proposing to move the start date, regardless of how we start, to September 8th. We need that time uh, from the original date to September 8th to allow teachers for planning purposes, if they are in person, hybrid-wise, or if we do start remote. They're going to need some, some of that time to transition and plan. So you're looking at the teacher's day to be, I think it was what, the second or the third, but the student day be the eighth? Yeah. Yes. And there's a weekend in there as well. Yeah. And so, the whole thing with the governors. So the eighth is the Tuesday after Labor Day. Yes. Okay. So um, that's based on our, the moves that we need to make, the planning that we need to do. And does that have any impact on um, like Sanford or like you've worked through all of that? Yes, most of York County is going to be recommending a start date of September 8th, however that looks. Okay. All right. Um, well, does anybody have any questions or comments on that? Well, the only question I had you just asked was about the five vote days that we need to make sure that we stay within. So if everybody's going to go to the 8th, then that kind of eliminates that concern. So I would support student day on the 8th. And just to clarify that, that would be teacher start date on August 31st. We're keeping that all intact. Oh, great. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, can I get a motion to adopt September 8th as the start date for the amended calendar? I'll, I'll make that motion. This is Nancy. I'll second, and I'll second that as Travis. 
Okay, um, Linda Corliss? Yes. Travis Dwyron? Yes. Stephanie Hagenbo? Yes. Do we have a Rebecca yet or no? No Rebecca. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Estrita Schaefer? Yes. And Denise Malley, yes. Um, and is there anything else or are we adjourning? We need to um, set up another meeting. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I mean, should we be getting back to our... So the topic would be um, deciding at this point in time how we want to start the fall. And yes, of course, it's subject to change. So my recommendation would be either next Friday, because Governor Mills is coming out with a new designation on Friday, or the Monday the 17th. Because I know there's going to be quite a bit of discussion about what does that first, how do we enter? So can we wait until the 20th, which is our scheduled meeting, or do we want to try and get it in as quickly after that? I think we, might know. we have people I think we want to make that decision. And the teachers need the time to plan too. Yeah. So I, I, I would suggest that Friday. I mean, there's no point in waiting. Once we have the governor's word, we have the information we need from that side. So and what are we gonna be what are we gonna be deciding on? I it sounds like there is some in some interest in exploring if we start remote or if we start in hybrid. And I think we'll have two good pieces of information. We have the green identification right now, having the 14th and see how that looks. Does it look the same? Does it look different? How does it look different? And then just having a really good discussion about how you see us doing that. We can phase in, we can start remote. There are a lot of options. We don't just have to stick with a straight hybrid plan right away. Um, we have flexibility, but we wanna make sure that we've explored it all so that we can do uh, what makes the most sense. Because so we'll also have the, the registration information by yeah. that. Right. And I think parents need to know what to tell their bosses. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm all for the Friday. Um, I... I could... Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm away next week. I could find a cell tower and try to sit next to it um <laughs> yeah, if i did it last week in the woods in, in the mountains i'm sure you can do it wherever you're going it's, it's really not great cell service where i'm going to be but i it is doable it's just not great um so what are we looking at friday night i would prefer monday if i'm on duty again friday and while well, fridays don't usually end well so i would prefer a monday <laughs> In order to I, be a part of it? Personally, I would prefer Monday as well. And I think from a decision standpoint, that doesn't it doesn't impact um, this like I, I mean, that would be my choice. But I well I'll go with the majority. I'm available either today, so in here. I vote for Monday. Either day's fine with me. <clears throat> yeah. Sounds like Monday all around. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Did anybody hear Monday from everybody? <laughs> um, is, sure. there, is there? Do you need us to do this sooner than Monday? I guess it's really up to you guys. It's not. It's yeah. not about our convenience. It's if you guys need a decision by Friday, so that Monday you can start planning. I think Monday's okay. Yeah. So Monday the seventeenth. Yeah, I think it would be helpful if if we had something to mull over ahead of time as far as what it, I, I would like. I'd love to have it. I'd love to have you guys present us with, uh, you know, maybe one other option besides the, what we've been talking about. Um, and something that we know that you guys have thought through and that, you know, teachers are on board, whatever you've transferred. I, I feel like this is a huge amount of this is about transportation, but um, you know, if, if what you're hearing back 
kind of leads you in a direction. I think if there's any information that we can be looking at ahead of time, I think that would be helpful. Sure. So Monday the 17th, that seems so far away. Um, Okay. Will we meet in the library or will we be um, meeting remotely again? I'd rather meet, meet remotely. I can meet in person. I can meet yeah. in person. Uh, as long as you don't have a hurricane. As long as what? <laughs> as long as you don't have another hurricane. <laughs> I think we do the same setup that we just did. I think it was Tuesday now. Uh, for those that can't re meet, can't or don't want to meet in person, we still give them the option to re meet remotely if that's possible with Chris. Okay, so Monday the 17th at seven o'clock in the library um, with a remote option. Sounds good. All righty. And uh, I just want to point out, I think it was a really good idea, whoever came up with uh, sending out the little automation with the phone calls for the parents and then the little text reminders and things, you know, the, uh, originally making sure you fill out your survey and these changes are happening. Um, I think that's really great for, you know, parents who might not be checking the website, getting informed and being on top of things. So props to whoever came up with that. Thank you. I think I've asked this before. Is there a way for those of us on the board who don't currently have kids in the system to get those as well? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we've got that a street, or I can tell you right now. <laughs> I can tell you. But then I'll be better You're going to regret it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Anything else? No? All right. Can we get a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. This is Nancy. Second. Who is that, Stephanie? Oh, Steph. Okay. All right, yeah. That's okay. Um, all right, uh, Linda Corliss? Yes. Travis Dorman? Yes. Stephanie Hagenboo? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. Estrita Schaefer? Yes. And Denise Mallet, yes.